Um, I, I'm Brenda Mallory, teacher librarian at Abbotsford Traditional School in Abbotsford. Uh, Tiffany Smith is my co-presenter. Uh, she's our library tech here at Abbey Traditional and at several other schools in the district. Um, in the chat, we've uh, shared a link to our resource page that we've created for this slideshow or for this presentation. So that resource page has a link to the slideshow. It has a link to um, the categories chart that we're going to show you later. It has some um, step-by-step instructions for destiny things that we're going to show you later. And it has um, all links to all of the supplies that we use when we did this process and um, which ones we bought and so on from there. So uh, if you want to uh, save that link, um, it will be very helpful for you. Oh, uh, I am unable to share my screen host. You have disabled participant screen sharing. Lisa. Okay, let me... Mm -hmm. Hmm. This is when I feel really, really dumb. I don't use Zoom much at all, so I don't know that I'd be able to even help yeah, on I that. I rarely host on my end, so. Um, okay. I'll find your settings somewhere. But... Uh, meeting settings. Let's see. Can you share if you end up being a co-host? Mm -hmm. If you don't find it, maybe okay. making me a oh, do you find it? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So say making me a co-host might um might work too. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, here we go. Click participants and Brenda make host. Or wait, nope, cancel. I don't want to oh. make you the host, but co -host. I want to make you <laughs> co-host. Yes. Okay, there you go. Okay, there we go. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Um let's do the whole screen. All right, now if I can get into, oh, I hate this part. <sighs> of course, my little, oh, I hate this part. Okay, last uh, time. Oh, was it up there? No, it's, um, you go into. Oh, be careful, don't touch. Oh, there we there go. go. Sorry, it was uh, covering my tabs on the top. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, for questions, the chat, it works fine, but feel free to just unmute and holler as well, um, especially if it's relevant to where I'm at and, and you want to interrupt me. I'm happy to be interrupted. That is not nice. Oh, from the beginning, please. There we go. Okay. So um, again, this uh, bit.ly on the bottom of this slideshow title page is the one that's in the chat as well. So again, Brenda Mallory, she, her, uh, Tiffany Smith, uh, she, they. And we are gonna get going. Do you want to do that? We can sure. just do the ours. I have to slide over to talk. I don't know. I don't think I can hear you. Um, so we'll start with our land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that we are presenting today on, I guess, um, do the bottom. Yeah. We uh, that we are presenting today on the traditional and unceded territory of the Stalo people, the Samath First Nation, and the Mathkwe First Nation. With this, we respect the long-standing relationships that Indigenous nations have to the land as they are the original caretakers. Okay, so how it started. This is uh, what our nonfiction section looked like before we undertook this project. And it's probably what most of your nonfiction sections look like if you have yet to do this. It's crowded, it's not browsable. You know, we've got a little bit of front-facing attempts made there, um, but really it's very difficult for students to find what they need or to be pulled in um, and engaged by the nonfiction. So that's what we started with. Uh, this is how it's going now. Uh, you may notice a, little slight, um, a slight difference in shelving. Uh, we did undergo a renovation shortly, like kind of in the middle of this. Uh, we had about two months in our old space after uh, genre finding the nonfiction. So we had, um, uh, yeah, and then we packed everything up and we moved into a little temporary library, we underwent a renovation, and these are our new shelves in the new space. Uh, so it's not quite apples to apples to compare how it looks this way, um, but I will show you how it looked in the old space as well. But as you can see, we've got our different uh, categories in there, lots of front facing, super engaging, uh, really, really draws the kids in. Uh, this is how it worked in between. So um, on the um, 
right, you can kind of see our literature and uh, poetry section, arts and entertainment, sports and adventure. We had very, very uh, small and not very many shelves in the old space. So we didn't have as uh, many things out as we did, as we do now. But this is how it worked if you're really comparing before to after. So again, front facing, really engaging. So what we're gonna talk about is a little bit of the why touch on that in a second. Um, the process, so the supplies we used, which categories we chose and why, um, our process of weeding, sorting, physically moving the books, how we digitally updated everything in Destiny, um, and then touching on dynamic displays, bookstore model, and then we're going to look at the results, so our circulation statistics, um, and I have some student voice uh, feedback in there as well. So what laid, led to us making the move away from Dewey? Uh, Tiffany, do you want to do this slide? Sure. Uh, okay. So I was part of a group that um, talked about the classification system and Dewey and how um, Indigenous works don't really fit within the Dewey decimal system. Um, they all get lumped into one number and that doesn't really help. And so we decided to remove all of our Indigenous works from Dewey. Um, and use a localized version of the Brian Deere classification system uh, that was created by one of my coworkers. Um, and in doing this, we decided to take a deeper dive on the Dewey Decimal System and it inspired further social justice related changes. Um, our district inquiry question for our LLC team has been for many years, um, if our LLCs are welcoming, inclusive and safe space where students and staff can access and engage with a variety of resources. Mm -hmm. In a meaningful way and using the Dewey Decimal System, the answer is no. <laughs> Definitely a no with Dewey. Uh, so when we presented uh, originally at the conference and we got to this why part here, the Dewey Decimal System has many biases, systemic injustices built in. Um, when we were presenting in person, there was lots of nodding heads at this point. And I kind of just said, is there anyone here who isn't already aware of how horrible the Dewey Decimal System is as far as homophobia being Christianity focused, uh, misogynistic, sexist, racist. And the answer was definitely a resounding, we're all aware and that's kind of why we're here. So the slide is here. Um, you can kind of even look at it while I'm talking. Um, on the resource page that we've shared, there are links to several articles that talk um, more deeply onto the problems with the Dewey Decimal System, not just Dewey the man, because also very problematic, um, but the problems with the classification system as a whole. Um, and if you want to deeper dive, perhaps it's something you need to share with your admin teams if you're looking for um, money <laughs> to do this project, because it can be expensive if you're looking for extra hours, any of those pieces. Um, those um, articles linked in there will be really helpful for that. Um, I really, in, uh, in particular, um, recommend this one that's um, tagged down here, which is where do we go from here? Um, it's a really good one. It's got tons of great resources in there. So I'm not going to really talk on this because I think we're all on the same page. Uh, but the other bigger problem is, as we said, it's not user friendly. Books are spread all over. Ser a series will be separated into eight different sections because um, they have slightly different topics. Uh, biographies drives me crazy and with Dewey, it's spread all over the system, depending what the specialization was of the person being written about. And it's just completely not engaging for readers. A number-based system is not something that um, kids are eager to dive into. But we are eager to dive into our process here. So the process um, of our nonfiction genrefication. So the first step, the first thing we did um, was order supplies. We ordered them early so that they would be ready. Um, it would be here and be ready by the time we were ready for them. So on the right hand side, you can see all the different supplies that we ordered. I'll touch on those. These again are all linked uh, on the resource page. Once we settled in, once we started um, setting up, especially in the new space, we had um, to order more things that we were a little bit short of. We'll talk on that. But in particular, our signage and um, our labels, um, our stickers, those were the most important ones to order ahead of time because you don't want to be sitting there waiting for them uh, and not having them. So here's kind of some examples of what we use. Uh, these bins are from Ikea. They are fantastic. Again, they're linked. They were about 250 or 350 each. Um, I love that they're clear. Um, they're the perfect size for, um, and you can turn them either way. If you have something slightly wider, you turn them. These are my favorite bins. 
These magazine holders were from Amazon and they're great for those little, those series that are so tiny, they get lost on the shelf. Um, like these conspiracy theories uh, that we have are super skinny. Um, so they're really great for that. And then the removable shelf labels, you can see in the one picture there, mysteries and the unknown. <clears throat> these are super, super important. This is what's gonna help kids uh, narrow down and find uh, in particular. So if they're in the sports and adventure section and they want uh, soccer or they want basketball, which are the two they want in our school, um, then they can just look for the label. Also helps with reshelving, of course, um, to know what kind of your subsections are. And we'll look at what subsections we have in a minute. Um, we also use tons of book easels. I just, in fact, ordered some more the other day. Uh, they just tons and tons of them, more than you think you will need um, for lots of front facing. And then the color tinted labels. So this is in our technology section. It has orange color tinted labels over top the spine label. Um, so those we ordered from Demco. Um, our labels are from Demco and they are the um, just color tinted. So you can kind of read through them um, and, but it just, it makes it super easy to find if something is out of place. It makes it really easy to figure out what section something's going back into when you're shelving again. Um, so again, I've, I've got an orange book. I'm going to the orange section. And within that, I kind of look and go, oh, it's a Minecraft book. It's going in video games. So those are the supplies that we use. Okay, so the second step, and this is kind of the, the bigger things. Um, we picked our really big, broad sections and categories. So there was a high school in Texas called the Reedy High School Library. And uh, at readylibrary.com, you can find a blog post about um, when they genreified their nonfiction. So that's where where we kind of pulled, that she shared, love her, she shared uh, her categories and what different topics went into each category. And we kind of took that as a basis and we adapted to what worked for us. Same as we've shared ours with you, adapt it away and, and make it work for your building and your um, books, what you have. So we picked our topics there on the right there. We have 12 different um, categories, broad categories. And then we kind of decided what what uh, type of book will go into each category. So I'm gonna open up our um, categories chart here. Let's see if this works without crashing me here. Slowly and tiny, there we go. Okay, so our broad categories, so you can see on the chart here, biographies and true stories, what types of books go in there? Well, biographies, memoirs, collections of true stories, real life adventures, true crime. Um, then we have subcategories for displays. Those are the ones that are on those little removable shelf labels. So um, they're, how are they grouped on the shelf so that students can find what they're looking for? So these are how our biographies are broken down. I will say, and I mentioned this um, when we presented before, biographies was one of the toughest ones because um, like I have a, we have an inspirational category and it's fairly big and it has a lot of things that maybe would have been nice to break it down, but you really only have so much space. You kind of have two subsections per shelf, right? And maybe a third in the middle if you have something you can stack. Um, but really depending on how many shelves you have is kind of gives you an idea of how many subcategories you can have. Um, so I would have loved to have more subcategories and break down biographies further, but we just didn't have the shelf space for it. Um, so you can kind of scroll through and again, you've got this link um, yourself so you can see um, more closely what we have. Um, so arts and entertainment, sports and adventure. And again, this is very adaptable for your space. So for example, um, Tiffany works at another middle school that also has, um, she's done this process there. And we have here an arts and entertainment section and a sports and adventure section. But at her other middle school, uh, there wasn't space for it. So they have sports and entertainment. And everything that we have listed in those two categories is in one category and it works. Um, so it really kind of, Varies. We have an art school in the district that has done this. And we have, um, again, arts and entertainment. They have so many arts books because they are an arts focused school that they have, it's just art. Um, one section is just art and it's really broken down with tons of visual art, tons of film and so on. So it's different for elementary. And of course, different for elementary. So we are a six to 12 school here. So this is what we did in our six to 12 school. Uh, Tiffany does work at some elementary schools and has done this there. It's absolutely possible. If you would like a link uh, or sorry, a list of the categories that she uses at or that any of the elementary schools use here in Abbotsford, uh, send Tiffany an email and she can share with you the list of the elementary ones she used. 
Um, so yeah, you can see our categories, um, our indigenous knowledge. Again, this is all classified using our localized brine deer classification system, um, but they are, they do have their own shelf. Um, it's just that the, the way that they are subcategorized are based on uh, brine deer and the way that they are, the spine labels are actually changed on there. We did not change, I'll touch on this after, but we did not change the spine labels um, from Dewey. We just kind of covered over them with the colored, but the indigenous ones were in fact changed. So yeah, this is what we have, history, government, geography, literature, and poetry. And you can see, again, um, our subtopics, they really, really depend on what books you have. So for example, um, like if we go back up here a little bit. Um, well, like our technology section. So we have a subcategory, a display uh, section for graphic library of inventors. That's because we have a series that's called the Graphic Library of Inventors. If you don't have that series, um, you're not gonna probably have a Graphic Library of Inventors section. Same with technology and times past. That is our um, a, a series that we happen to have here. So how it works is a series we happen to have here. You totally adapt this for your clientele and for what works for you. Uh, any, before I pop away from here, are there any questions? Um, I see, I see looking for an elementary list, but does anyone have any questions that wants to look more closely at this chart, which again, you have a copy of if you follow that link. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay. I'm going to pop back out back to my, back to this. All right. It's working. Okay, so that was, that's how we um, broke that down. Our third step in the process was a weeding. <laughs> so first we did a preliminary weed before we moved anything and it was just a, what's really obvious, what duplicates, you, re you need a lot of chef's shelf space for this process. So what do you have duplicates of that you don't really need duplicates of? What's really obviously damaged or old? I mean, this was just basic weeding uh, process here, but we did our first one just without pulling anything off, without that deep dive, what can we get rid of right away? Because you need as much shelf space as you can have. What we did here is we did, we have 2000 nonfiction books in our collection right now, and we weeded about a thousand. So we weeded about a third of our collection in order to pull this off. We also have a, a great deal out of space now in our new space, but um, so you have to you got to weed down to the point where you can front face, where you can have it, have the space for them to find the good stuff. So after that preliminary weed, we went through and we put sign holders with each of our sections. So a history one, a government geography, technology, each of our categories that we had chosen went in a poster and a sign holder and went on a different table in the library. Um, and then we just went to the shelves and started pulling things off the shelves, look at what, what, where we think it should go and put it on that table. Uh, not super deep. Uh, we didn't weed at this point. It was, where does this fit? Um, put it on the table. Sometimes we had some conversations about it, but we had deeper conversations on the next stage. Someone asked when we were presenting this um, in person was um, kind of how, <laughs> how did you have time for that? Um, again, this is a middle secondary school. Um, our teacher librarians are not prep coverage. And I know that they are for elementary. Are, they are for elementary in our district and they are for elementary in a lot of districts. Um, and that absolutely makes it much more complicated and much more difficult to find the time for it. And I think that's where you maybe have to um, have conversations with admin about, about making time for it and seeing what they can do for you on that piece. Um, we, we did stay open and we just kind of said, don't touch the nonfiction for now. Again, they weren't really drawn to the nonfiction before anyway, so that wasn't really a big issue, but we did stay open and you know step away and help them with the other stuff but I didn't have classes and I didn't have um, prep coverage. And I know that we are very fortunate in that and it makes it all much, much easier. So went through, yeah, the um, some of it's really easy. 900s, you know, you got a ton of history. Most of it was really kind of just plop it on the table and, and go from there. Um, some of it was a much more um, complicated conversation and tons of stuff can go in more than one section. And it all came down to for us is um, what, um, where will it get the eyes? Where will it be seen? Where will our kids find it the, mo the most? Um, and that's where we put it. So uh, rather than burying it in a section, we didn't think that they would find. Uh, once they were all spread out on the tables in their new sections, we weeded again. We went table by table, section by section, and did a much heavier weed. 
um, we talked more closely about things, especially because we were both doing this at the same time. And maybe when we went to the table, it was books the other person had put there. And maybe we had a different thought on where that went um, or second guess ourselves, which happened a lot too. So discussed, moved any books that didn't seem to be in the right section after we looked at them a little bit more closely. Um, and again, a heavy, heavy lead at this point, section by section. So the only picture that I took <laughs> during the process um, was this one here where this is kind of what we had on the kids. So we'd made our history section and we uh, kind of shoved them back up to clear the tables a little bit and just put signs up. That was don't touch because we didn't want someone to pick up a history book and wander down and plop it in technology before we'd moved things and labeled things. Uh, and so then we accidentally put it in the wrong section. So after we physically um, moved things, to, into their different groups, we digitally updated the records in Destiny. And Tiffany can speak to this. Okay, so um, I'm sure pretty much everyone here uses Destiny, so I'm gonna do the quick version of this. Um, so once everything had been moved, we created the new sub uh, locations and copy categories within Destiny. And then we scanned each of the book into its new section. Um, this can be done in one of two ways. Um, you can, the way that we did it is you can scan into a note on your computer using the notepad app. Um, don't use Word or Excel or anything else because it doesn't work. And you upload the file to Destiny and it just whoops everything into that new category for you. Um, or you can scan directly into the barcode list that's further down on the screen on Destiny. Um, this is great if you're moving a small section. Like the other day we moved, um, just like a little stack of like five books um, from one section to another because we were just like, you know what? It actually fits better here. Um, and I quickly just did it using the barcode list and that works great. Um, we have a step-by-step, -step, uh, click-by-click instruction list on how to do this if you are unfamiliar um, or haven't had to do this at your school yet through Destiny. Um, and once again, just to reiterate, we did not change the call numbers in Destiny or on the spine labels um, due to our destiny admin wanting those left on for reporting purposes. Yeah, so our spine labels here, um, our spine labels, even new books that come in, they do still have the Dewey number on them. In destiny, they still have a call number, a Dewey based call number on them. Uh, we did try to um, have our district allow us to move completely away from that. Um, and if you're allowed, it would be great. Your call number could be, um, you know, NF. NF for nonfiction, tech for technology. And then you could even have a, a video games or VG or something for video games to have it really more specific and make it easier for other people to shelve. We're the, we're the only ones who really shelve the nonfiction here. Um, and it's it's been fine that way. There's some that's really obvious and people other people could use. But otherwise, we, we know the books. We, we can look at a book. We can see, okay, it's got that that orange sticker. It's going in technology, and we can look at it and go, oh, it. I know it goes in this section because I made this section, and and um, I just I know the book. And if you have something new, you just take a, a close look at it and see where is it going to fit. Um, but yeah, our Destiny admin wanted to be able to run district wide uh, reports to see um, how each how each kind of call number was was uh, performing, and because this is so adaptable to to your particular school we're not the same school to school uh even in even within our district so like i mentioned earlier tiffany's got you know two categories we have here into one at our other school so in order for them to run reports that they wanted um that were more district wide and uniform <clears throat> uh we had to leave um the call numbers on there that being said the kids don't use them they, they don't, we don't use them. We don't even look. If we look up a book, we see, okay, it's in technology and here, let me help you find it or go to the, go to technology. It's orange. It's going to be under video games and they can find it that way. Um, so yes, that call number, the Dewey number is still on there. The kids don't know it's there. They don't even look at it. And the problems that come from it are not um, perpetuated, right? Like it's not, um, it, it, yeah, they're not, it, it, the, the issue is related to that little tiny number. If you're not teaching them what that number means, those the issue is is um, doesn't become an issue. That makes sense. So anyway, as Tiffany said, these one these how to steps are all um, in that resource page as well. Okay, uh, fifth step was stickers and shelving. 
So this is when we place those color tinted labels over the spine labels. So we didn't tape over the color labels. We just took the color, the color tinted sticker, placed it right over the spine label and then did not tape over that so that if we had to move something, which we've had to do, it's just easy to take off the color sticker and put a different color on. That being said, if you are in a building where maybe in elementary, I don't know, where the kids are picking at them, then you can just tape over them as well. And obviously the tape can come off almost as easily. Uh, we had student helpers do this. I had peer tutors, grade 11, 12 peer tutors that kind of, and, and just kids, you know, you all have kids that just live in your library, but kids that just live there and we're like, here, this, this stack of books, this uh, box of stickers, put them on. We did almost none of those um, stickers. That was all students. And I, honestly, even in elementary, grade five, grade six, grade seven, all of them could do that easily. So once the color tinted labels were over the spine labels, we reshelved into their new sections. So as we reshelved, we tried to group into subcategories wherever were possible. Um, so again, that chart has the ones that we used. Um, so yeah, and then just um, using those removable shelf labels, we categorized them. We put, um, again, this video games technology seems to be my go-to example. Um, but we have like in our society and culture, we have a 2S LGBTQIA plus label. So that the shelf label says that, and then there's all our um, LGBT books on there, nonfiction books on there. Uh, again, super helpful. Readers find the books more easily. You can reshelve more easily. Um, it's easy for someone to figure out where to look. So this is a um, picture, a close up of one of our shelves. Um, so the, the key piece in this to make it more engaging is that dynamic shelving, that bookstore model, uh, front facing wherever possible, different types of stacks, add visual interest, just making it really cool to look at and make it catch the eye. So on this shelf, you can see two different removable shelf labels, uh, fashion on the left and architecture on the right. Our fashion is just stacked old school, vertical um, with a bookend. We've got one front facing from the fashion section. Um, and then architecture, because we only have a handful of architecture books, it's stacked um, horizontally and then uh, one front facing on top of it. Again, at a middle high school, we don't have a problem with the front facing on top of a little stack. And I realize that at elementary, this might be a call for a huge mess as they dig through to find other things, but you could just stack them vertically on the side and front face in the middle if that's what works more easily for you. In elementary? Yeah. Tiffany was just saying in element, she has at one of her elementary, some of her elementary schools, the stacks and that they do work. Uh, so again, some more of the dynamic shelving here. You can see in that top picture, uh, we've got one of the magazine holders from Amazon. These are so great. Um, and that's a series, 12 Reasons to Love, and they're different sports in there. So rather than, again, do we, do we like, rather than breaking that up into, okay, the basketball one goes in our basketball section and the hockey one goes in our hockey section, they are in that um, series bin together. And then that's hockey on the right. We've got a little stack of these um, GOAT greatest of all time books that are there. Um, the bottom corner there, again, some different ways of, of, of displaying. So a vertical stack and actually the horizontal stack is being used as a bookend next to it with front facing up top. Another one beside, there's a magazine holder next to that with different mythical creature books in it. Uh, it's super, super engaging and it's gorgeous to look at and it absolutely draws the kids right in the dynamic shelving. So our circulation stats. So if we were to compare apples to apples, so this is our old, all numbers in our old library space. So as I said, we only had two months in that old space from the time we did this process to when we had to pack up to um, move out so they could renovate this space. Some, someone will have a question? No. Nope. Okay. Um, so comparing again, um, old space to old space still, our nonfiction circulation went up 114%. Um, it was, it's insane. So this is still the old shelves. The We didn't have very many shelves. We, had, we didn't have nearly as many books out even because we had fewer shelves. Um, so just a two month comparison to the same two months the year before, we went up 114%. Um, and then if you compare um, at, at larger time period, so as I say, apples to apples that are on prettier shelves, our circulation went up 143%. So this, these numbers are February to October, 2021, because in 2022, we were in our temporary teeny tiny space, which I'll talk about in a second, compared to we moved back into our new space in February, um, and then 
these numbers were run in October. So 2021 to 2023, 143% increase in our nonfiction circulation. It's absolutely insane. We, and anecdotally, you can tell just by what's getting returned every day. You may not notice when you scan, when you check them out, but as you're reshelving, we are shelving in a day what we used to shelve in a week um, on nonfiction minimum. It's, it's crazy. It, it's really, really, really dramatic, the increase in the numbers. I can't stress that enough. It made a huge difference. In fact, that time we were for a semester, so half of a school year, we were in our, what we called the little library. It was um, across the hall, this smaller than a regular classroom, windowless little cave um, with whatever shelves they could, you know, grab from around the building. Um, we didn't have a lot of room. So what we brought in for there for nonfiction was the equivalent of one shelf per section. So one shelf for history, one shelf for government and geography, one shelf for indigenous knowledge. Um, and even even with that, with less shelves, less books, it still increased from the same time period the year before, went up 9% still, which the fact that it can, 9% isn't very much, but when you have literally one shelf compared to six shelves and an entire bookcase of books, it's very, very dramatic. So uh, I can't yeah, stress enough how much this does work um, on increasing your numbers. So a couple more uh, kind of before and after in the same space. So this is the old space on the left, it's kind of our before. I'm sure this is what your nonfiction looks like. And this is our society and culture section in the old space. Again, we had only, even then we only had three shelves um, and we now have six in our, in our new, with our new shelving system. But really, really engaging. Um, it draws the eye, it, it's, it's pretty. <laughs> The colors really, honestly, the, even the colors on the labels dr draw the eye and draw the kids in. Um, it just, it, it's very, very engaging. Uh, this is the renovated space. Just a couple more pictures there. You can see we have bins in the biographies and true stories. We have the um, who was books, um, which are all binned in biographies. We have what was in history. We have where was in geography and so on and so on. We have all the different ones. If you don't have those books at any level, because my high school kids read those as well. I highly recommend you invest in the Who Was series because they are massive. Um, so yeah, you can see a couple of sections there. Science and math has two bookcases in our space and history has two, book, two full bookcases because they were our biggest sections. Um, and that's how many shelves we had. So we had 12 categories, 14 shelves. Um, so you can see uh, a lot more of the science and math. Well, a lot more science. Technically, it's like half a bookshelf of math, but we had nowhere else to put math. So it went with science. And we are growing the math. We were talking about this before. I've had so many students this year ask me for math books. It's bizarre. Just for fun reading. Okay. So we had a handful of them, but I've, we've been looking for more and bringing more in. And that's actually one of the things you can uh, really get a better grasp on when you do this is you get to know your collection really, really well. Um, and you get to see where the gaps are as well. Um, I think this is the last picture. Yeah, so here you can see um, some student voice. This goes so much faster when we're not in person, when we don't have the questions coming through. Um, I'm not gonna read all of these out. You can have a look at it. Um, oh, my slide did mess up on there. What do students think of the change? These are some just some quotes I was able to gather from some of the uh, middle school students. Um, they love it. They they find it easy to find um, where things are. Just go to look at the sports section. They're saying now, um, I like it better now. It's organized, uh, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the last quote is one of the middle school teachers who happened to be around when I was gathering quotes. But what I really appreciated about his comment was, even as someone whose space this isn't, so I'm not a librarian. I don't know how, I don't know how Dewey works. I wouldn't know how to find something. He said, I can help the kids find something. I can help. I can find something for myself much more easily. It's very, very browsable, um, which is, I think, what we really want. Mm -hmm. So, wow, that went much faster without being in person and having um, questions. I'm going to, well, maybe I should pull some pictures up. I was going to stop sharing my screen and see if anyone had questions. Um, but I'm wondering, does anyone have a question they want to ask out loud? Or would you want to see more pictures? I have, I can just open my folder of photos or I can pull up the, um, the chart and we can talk about the different categories. Um, Katie is asking, 
She says, um, asking for suggestions for how to get your admin on board. Yeah, so we, again, were very fortunate because um, this was, for us, was driven from our district um, principal in charge of library learning commons. And we were actually the pilot school. So they even paid for all of our supplies, which was amazing. Um, I think you, I think you start with reading those, some of those Dewey articles and putting together something for them that shows the problems with Dewey, um, because it is really, really problematic and it does not create a safe space, um, for our kids. Um, if they want to talk numbers, then you can, you know, you can use our numbers and you can talk about how it will increase nonfiction circulation. But I think the why behind it, um, that social justice piece of it is even more important. So if you maybe put together some of pull from those articles, there's about five or six articles linked there um, and tell them what the problems are with Dewey, I think, and um, how this fixes them, um, how it's, it, 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 it drives kids to, so we have a society and culture section that has the two S LGBTQIA plus one that I talked about, but it also has race, racism and anti-racism as a section. And it's really easy for them to find. It has activism as a section, and it's really easy for them to get drawn into those um, social justice pieces that they wouldn't maybe, maybe find um, on their own. Um, it does, it is, it does cost. I will say that the, the stickers, again, it's all linked to that chart. Maybe I'll pull that chart up and show you some of the costs. I know that was a question we had in person. Um, if I can, nope. Oh, okay. Yes. Click to exit. Sorry. Now my thing's going to be up. No, nope, don't click stop sharing. Well, I was just going to drag that up. You can't. <laughs> um, I'm going to get a more. Sorry, um, it's the um, the bar, the Zoom bar covers I my tabs. Thanks. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm here for. Now I forget what I, oh, it's gonna show you the um, the prices on things. So put it, I would say put it together and say, this is an estimate of how much it will cost, but here's our supplies. So our signs, our big signs above each section were about 25 each, but Tiffany has ordered some for her other schools more recently and they've gone up a little bit. Mine were different though, mine are different sizes. Um, they didn't stand very well on their own. So we bought these little Ikea wooden phone stands to hold them, 350 each. So you're looking at about $30 per section for that signage. Um, you know, you can see that, you can see the prices here, 785 US, so $10 per roll of the color tinted labels, depending how many rolls you need based on how big your sections are. Um, Amazon was actually way cheaper. These removable shelf labels we had bought originally from Demco or Brodart. And then when we needed more, I found them on Amazon and they are better than the ones that Brodart or Demco had. And they're cheaper. It was Brodart um, and they're cheaper. So I do recommend the Amazon ones. Um, so I would say put it, put it together, um, put together a bit of a cost thing. And time-wise, um, we, oh, there was, so Tiffany was here three days a week, I think when we first did this, process. She's only two days now, but three days a week then, and I'm full-time and again, not prep coverage. So we spent, and I <clears> did it all. Of yeah. Favorite. So we spent about a week before spring break, um, making our categories and pulling things, putting them on the table, um, and starting that, that whole process. And then Tiffany works through spring break. So during spring break, she spent the time, <clears throat> uh, updating in destiny, and reshelving. Um, and again, we had kids do the stickers. So you can all, uh, you don't have to add in hours necessarily for that, depending what level you're at. And if you have responsible um, elementary school students. Um, but I would say, depending on the size of your library, again, we weeded about a thousand and we have 2000 now. So you can use that as a, as a bit of a time frame. But really, it was, I think you could do it in a couple of weeks. Your elementary, you've whipped I did it through. In two days. <laughs> So she, I don't know if you could hear that. She just said in one of her elementary, she did it in two days. Um, but that was not circulating at the same time because you only circulate about half of a day there, right? No, I... Um, Do you want to slide in? Yeah, sure. Just for better hearing. Um, so I did my elementary school. It is teeny tiny, very tiny. Yes. Um, I did it in two days and I did it um, before we had even started circulating for the year. So right. I am there only once every two weeks. Um, and so on the two days I was there before we started circulating, uh, the first day I pulled everything off the shelves and just in my floor, cause I could make a mess. I literally just started piling things in stacks. And as I saw a duplicate or something, I just kind of set it aside to weed it out. 
Um, and then I wrote out my categories and I put them on top of the shelves and I had my little sticky notepad and I literally just started section by section. I just slide the books over and I just start being like, okay, here, 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 and put the st sticky notes on and just went through and did it. And so I managed to get it done in two days before we opened up for circulation. Do you know what size, you know, how many books you have there? I have no clue, but it's, it's tiny. It's very tiny. Like it can't be more than 500. But, but that being said, I think, I think if you asked for two weeks of no classes, you'd have, you'd have enough time. And if you had a week with helpers, and you were a hundred percent, like if you closed, I don't know how, how feasible that is for people, but again, whether it's, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's summer, you know, if it's the end of the year when you're closing for inventory anyway, maybe, or beginning of the year before you open for circulation, um, if you can get some of that dedicated time, I, I do think you can whip through it really quickly. You don't, it, you don't have to create categories, right? You can use our categories that takes time out away from that. Um, there's the cost associated with supplies, of course, but honestly, I think, I, I do think one person, if they were working their whole shift, you know, they didn't have the interruptions. I think you could do it in a week in a, in a good size library. I really do. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Katie's question yeah. just popped up. Yeah. It's strange. Uh, does anyone have anything else? Do you want to see more pictures or I don't know where we're at. We're, we're about, at the 45 minute mark right now. So we yeah. do have more time if um, people want to. Here's these the articles I was telling you about. There's um, these Dewey related, but this last one here, um, where do we go from here? Perpetuation of difference in public library knowledge organization systems is really good. Um, it has really does more of a deep dive into um, the othering that is so prevalent in Dewey um, and the problems with that, of course. So that's a really good collegiate one to use. So it's from an actual um, academic journal. The others are, are blogs, you know, you've got a blog story from school library journal. Um, and those are, those are great too. Uh, they, they really are. But if your admin is maybe more inclined academically, uh, that last one is a good one to pull for them as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, this one here on the supplies on the Brodart. So Brodart was, has been down forever. Um, I ended up ordering these easels. I found them on Amazon just last week. I just bought more of these. We use these fantastic wire easels that have adjustable. They're great. I did find them um, on uh, Amazon for cheaper. So. Anybody else? Do we want to... Uh, maybe Lisa, do you want me to share pictures? Do you want me to wrap it up? What would you like? It is absolutely up to you. Okay. Um, let's see if I can find them quickly. I think I think people could stop watching now if they if they wanted to, uh, if they didn't want to see more pictures. But um, we do have a question. Um, oh, okay. Somebody. Uh, there's a question that says. Ours. Um, how can we access the links to the articles and oh. the um, items? Yes. So Tiffany's been sharing be... in the chat there that that bit.ly link that's resources we ditched Dewey. Um, that will bring you to the to that page. So it has on that resource page, it has a link to um, a link to our slideshow, a link to our chart that we use for, that for our categories, it has links to all of those articles, it has links to all of the supplies. So she just put it again in the chat there. Um, and perhaps um, when this gets, maybe when this gets posted on YouTube, you might be able to put that uh, link in the in the description or something. Um, so let me see if I can find some more pictures of our, I took tons of pictures before we opened for the year here. Oh, downloading, isn't that lovely? Because you double clicked it. Uh, these are our two science, um, science and math ones. Let's see if I can get that bigger for you. So you can get a bit of an idea. Um, again, lots of front facing. Um, someone asked actually when we were in person about the animals, because especially in an elementary school, there's a ton of animal books. So you can see in our science and math section, when you look at the different categories, we have them. Um, we have animals in general. We have deadly animals. We have endangered animals. We have... Um, a couple different um, uh, 
pets. We have pets um, as a category. So they're broken down. They're all in science, um, but they are broken down um, by the type of animal. And again, in elementary, you're going to have that yeah. even more so. Um, so yes, they are, they are in science and math and this whole bottom, the, the both shelves along the bottom are animals and pets is above it. Um, I think the boat, I think three shelves worth are just animals in ours and that's a middle high school. So, in, um, in elementary, I have a whole section that's just animals and it's broken down even further. Like a like, whole, like instead of science and math, you have it just called animals. I still have a science and math, but yeah. I have no, a whole yeah. section that's just yeah. animals. There you go. So that will be, if you have asked me to email you, I will email you. Yeah. Uh, again, super adaptable. Uh, here's our history section. One of the other ways that we tried to um, make it um, more social justice friendly, more inclusive, um, instead of saying, here's our ancient Egypt section, it was, um, we have ancient civilizations, Africa, ancient civilizations, South and Mesoamerica, ancient civilizations, Europe, uh, ancient civilizations, Asia, um, and have it broken down like that. So it's, it's more geographic um, and not just like, here's Egypt. Um, just makes it more inclusive that way as well. So yeah, we, and again, and again, the pieces that you can pull out and highlight. So we have black history within um, history. We have, um, like I was saying, race, racism, anti-racism within our society and culture. You can just highlight the things that need to be highlighted, the things that you hope these kids read um, and grow from. Um, it's more, it's easier to do um, in these this is uh, a little bit of our government geography section. So we have we had one of our French teachers um, does a project uh, every year where they have to research uh, a French speaking country. So she asked for travel guides. So we have travel guides for specific French speaking countries. But this section um, is called travel, get it, travel and explore. Um, we have military and law enforcement, um, things like that. So let's see if I can find, oops, went too far this one anyway oh that's the same one just opening there we go so space in the unknown and th there's our indigenous knowledge the indigenous knowledge is really um uh picked up its circulation as well um we've got this is all of our non-fiction indigenous and our graphic novels that are indigenous our indigenous fiction is still in line with our fiction which is also genreified, by the way. If you haven't genreified your fiction, we did that years and years ago, years and years ago here, and it again was dramatic on the circulation difference, and the kids able to browse and find what they want. So highly recommend that as well. And I have a blog post on that that when I did it. So if you if you need that, let me know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like people probably have an idea. Here's our ancient civilizations I was talking about. Again, for the weeding piece you're probably like me and we had tons of duplicates in ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, things like that. We are a one-to-one -one computer school. So all of our students have um, devices. So their research is not primarily done on in book format. They do it online as it is probably for a lot of our students these days. So we now focus our purchasing um, purely on um, pleasure reading. What do the students want to read for pleasure? And if a, if a teacher asks for a specific topic, like I was talking about those French uh, countries, government geography, literature and poetry, let's see. Oh, this is the old space, sorry, going the wrong way. Yeah, anyway, there's some more pictures. You can get an idea. It's super, super, super pretty and engaging. Highly recommend it. Um, and you can see, try to find a better one to show you on. Biographies is different. I don't want to get into the biographies issue, but um, hold on one sec. Show you what this looks like with the spine labels. Uh, so this is our big ideas. Um, this is like philosophy, psychology and stuff. This is within society and culture. Um, and you can see what the spine label looks like there. So you can see the, the Dewey number underneath and then just the pink, um, sticker over top. But again, you can, clearly we're, I mean, we've got 299, 100, 150, uh, kind of all smushed together there. We don't use the, we do not use the Dewey number. Um, it's all based on what is that book? Uh, where can I group that book? Um, there is a question in the chat about 
um, where to find the email to get the elementary list of sections. <laughs> Tiffany's just putting it in there right now. So um, okay. at the, both of our email addresses are at the beginning of the slideshow. So if you go to that resource page, the slideshow is the first link on there and you can open up the slideshow and find, um, I'm just gonna go back to the slideshow and go to that title page and find, um, can you see it on there? Not really. No, uh, just find our email addresses there too. So yeah, tiffany.smith at abbyschools.ca and brenda.mallory at abbyschools.ca. Uh, but again, that resource page, the very first link is the slideshow and our emails are at the beginning of the slideshow. And Tiffany just put her email in there as well. And yeah, it is it is easier if you don't mind to send her an email so she can just respond rather than um, accidentally missing any of you in the chat right now. So if you did want um, the elementary list, you can email her. If you want any, any other questions or anything, email either one of us or both of us. Um, she's got the elementary experience though. Um, and I've done this three times now. Yeah, three. Yeah, at least three times. About yeah. to do four. Yeah. Very, very, uh, very experienced. Well, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here if I can find it. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just. I don't know. I hate that. Zoom. You have to make that big. Not rename. Sorry, I'm trying to. It's because um, you stopped sharing my screen. Because you minimized I your did. things. I did. I made them go away and now I need them. Made them go away. Now I need them. No, they're not uh, here. No, because that's go to the thing. The thing? Yeah. Up in the oh my gosh. I miss Teams. I miss Google. Um uh, oh, can you not find it? Yes, I can. Go stop. <laughs> do, do, do. Where is it? Not self view. <laughs> she can't find it either. Anyway, oh. it's fine. Nicole can enter a meeting. You can look at you can look at me sharing my screen in the meantime. My Zoom screen. Oh. Um. Anyway, yes. If anybody has any other questions, uh, feel free to put them in there or email us, but I think otherwise we can uh, let you go. Maybe maybe Nicole can have me stop sharing my screen. Is that possible? Not Nicole, Lisa. Oh, Lisa, not Nicole. I'm sorry, Lisa. I don't have anyone's names in front of oh, me. Oh, let me see what I can do. It's because you're in the app. That's why. I know I'm in the app. If you yeah. were in the thing, I could pull up your thing again. How's that? Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I can see the chat now. I can see everybody. Look at all the messages. Excellent. It is, yeah, expense and time are huge considerations. I, I get that, Tracy. Uh, we were very, very fortunate to be the pilot school for our district and have that expense taken care of. I think that if you have a, uh, especially if you have an inquiry goal, like our inquiry goal, LLC wise in the whole district is all about inclusive safe spaces. And Dewey is not inclusive. Dewey does not present a safe space. So if you can um, tell your, show your admin that with the articles, with uh, any of it, um, and then even the bonus of it being super engaging and increasing your circulation numbers for nonfiction, which is so important. Let's create some critical readers, right? Um, I think that, I think that it will help, um, to push that, but I get it. It, it, it um, is an expense. Yeah. I'm doing something similar in new Westminster and that's basically yeah. been our angle and that also adding the, um, reconciliation lens to yes, it exactly. because yep. we're basically prioritizing indigenous content and knowledge yeah. and oh, our so brain here. Yeah, we did. That's yeah, right. I'm so glad I got to do this. I one. didn't even look at this. That's right. We chatted at the conference. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's basically, so, I mean, we've even presented before, I mean, when we were about halfway through the, through our process and um, last June, we asked to present to our school board. And yeah. give them the rationale for why we're doing all of this. And that, you know, this isn't something that we just woke up one morning and said, oh, hey, let's 
you know, exactly kick Dewey out of the library. It's like, no, we have very concrete reasons. Very sound about reasons. Yeah. Why this is not acceptable anymore. And like, I've gotten pushback from not really administrators because administrators are, you know, nobody's complaining or nothing's on fire in the library. They don't care. It runs, it does its thing. Yeah. But um, I've had teachers more than anybody else go, why are you doing this? Because, you know, well, everybody uses Dewey. I walk into a library, I go to the 900s and there's, you know, whatever. Well, and too. yeah. And so it's, you know, you sit down and it's like, okay, this is, these are the problems in Dewey. And you start, yeah. you know, kind of outlining it and, it's like, oh, okay, you know, you've got like the 300s. They're the junk drawer of the Dewey Decimal System because you have addiction next to women's issues, next to civil rights, next to, and it's, yeah, none of it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It, um, <laughs> The, the social justice piece of it, I think, is your angle. And you were saying you were presenting um, even to the school board. Yeah, our our yeah. district principal in charge of learning commons uh, shared our work um, when we were just in the old space, those pictures from the old space, shared our work mm -hmm. um, did, at, with all the admin in the district as well. And they are on board, right? They they yeah. are, um, they're all on board. It wasn't, it wasn't a fight. So um, at your particular school, depends on your admin and how tightly they might control her strings, I suppose. But yeah. um, I think, I think as a whole, our, our whole district, our whole district's done this now, or yeah. is in the process of doing this now. Um, and um, there's, there's been no pushback from admin and cost wise. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how they're, how they're making that work um, at the other schools, but it, it's valuable. It's valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we did um, consult our, I mean, New West is very compact. So we just have um, a single First Nation group to, um, on our territory. Yeah. And um, we did consult with them before we did anything. And it was, it kind of gave us a little extra, um, like had so it, it, we had that we had oh, the backing yeah. of yeah. our, yeah of the Kakite First Nation and our um, district's um, Indigenous Education Coordinator. Yeah. So um, if you, and then, yeah, and then you can bring in like, you know, we have our SOGI coordinator and everything. So if you can get the backing of those mm -hmm. individuals in your school district to, yeah. before you go to your admin to say, look, this is, Dewey's not inclusive. Absolutely. If you have a, I don't know if everyone, if each of the districts has, like we have our district principal in charge of library learning commons and blended learning and all the umbrella things that she does. Um, and uh, she she was definitely one of the spearheads of this, but that's who you need to get on board mm -hmm. and let her yeah. or him get them, get the rest of the district on board um, because they've got um, probably more speaking power, but they're also more likely to get it, right? They yeah, hopefully yeah. were teacher librarians um, and hopefully would be on board with. And also it's a way to make the district look good without. It does. Absolutely. Having to put any effort in. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. 